quick news break from Edge of the Web Radio. There's some huge news on the Google search front. There's a leak that has happened that is revealing a heck of a lot about Google search functionality and ranking factors. And this hasn't happened before, and it's probably the biggest news in the last 25 years of Google search. So we wanted to actually bring in Michael King from iPollRank. He's the founder who actually has released an article here today uh, along with uh, uh, Rand Fishkin, who also released an article. He's not there with us. I want to make sure that we got a hold of Michael so he could share this information. Michael, thanks for joining us on this flash. Thanks for having me. Sorry about your paces, by the way. Oh, no, no, no. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to do that. Dude, I literally was listening to that right at the last six minutes, and I was about to fall asleep. I was listening to the the Pacers Network, and my God, it was crushing. They did this exact same thing for the last three games. They had it. They had it in the bag, but they kept on turning this mm -hmm. stuff over so much that they lost, uh, got completely swept. Yeah, I'm doing sports ball. It's amazing. Anyway. <laughs> So, hey, uh, this is some major news and wanted to get a hold of you and, and I appreciate you also joining us on the news this week as well. Mike, give us, give us an understanding here. I, I, I understand that Rand Fishkin received an email from a person claiming to have access to a massive link of API documentation from inside of Google Search's uh, division, the Google Search division. A lot of information there, and he also shared this with you very, very quickly. And uh, you guys started to talk about what in the world this was. So, can you give us a little bit of a backstory of how did we get this information? Yeah, absolutely. So, I was actually at an art show with my kids, like my kids' art show at their school. And Rand calls me. He's like, "Hey, I've got access to some Google documents. I want you to take a look at it." And I was like, yeah, of course. And what he showed me was this internal API documentation uh, related to what's called their like content storage API. And so uh, there's like, you know, almost 3000 different documents in there mm -hmm. uh, outlining everything. And basically what happened was someone accidentally published this publicly on GitHub hmm. and then GitHub um, you, there's another service called Hexdocs, which pulls from GitHub to generate documentation. And so that is publicly available as a result of this accident. Now, if you go back to GitHub, you'll see, and that's like the first screenshot that I show in my yeah. post, is that um, you know all that stuff has been deleted. So clearly Google has, has figured this out, but the Hexdocs documents are still live. And so when you dig into it, it's a lot of different uh, modules representing different functions and also what are called protocol buffers mm -hmm. in the Google search environment. But it's more than just Google search. It's YouTube. It's Assistant. It's a number of different products in the Google ecosystem. Got it. And what we get in there is a number of features. I don't want to call them ranking factors because a lot of them have nothing to do with Google search. And also, we don't know how everything is being used in Google search. But the bottom line is we have a lot of features in there that some of which Google said didn't exist. So mm -hmm. as an example, they've always said they don't use a domain authority or any sort of like domain level scoring. Mm -hmm. There's actually a feature in there called site authority. So, you know, it's just like wow. definitively true that there is something in here that you said didn't exist. They also have talked a lot about how they don't use clicks. And of, of course, a story has been coming out ever since the DOJ trial right. where, you know, Pandu Nayak ad admitted like, hey, we use clicks to like reinforce rankings and it's in the system called NavBoost. And so, you know, in my post, I talk a lot about that specifically because that's something that they had went after Rand for because yes. of the experiments that he was doing live showing like, hey, clicks do directly impact rankings. So, you know, there's just a lot of that sort of stuff that I cover in the post. And then what I do is I just dig into um, those different features to see, like, what can we learn here and, and what can we validate on what it is that we, you know, have believed based on what we've seen in SEO from what we do. But just kind of like showing like, hey, here is an actual feature that aligns with that. And here are different functions that Google is describing in here or Google searches is, is describing in here that they're using to inform rankings. 
There was a lot of contention over the years uh, regarding um, what Google was saying and what tests were being out there. In fact, there's a lot of validation for Rand Fishkin right now because he was in 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 locked horns with liaisons of the t at the time and and what Google was actually s publicly saying. Um, he's got to feel good about this, and there's a huge social uh, swell right there uh, just supporting Rand because he was getting pretty hammered with Google's press positioning on certain things that he was pointing out regularly over the years. Now, this is obviously yeah. not why he got out of SEO. He went on to different things, but he was really the a lightning rod of a lot of, of uh, issues at the time, pointing out some severe uh, inconsistencies with what Google was actually doing. So kudos to Rand for, for this moment because, boy, what a... What a reconciliation there, and we certainly want to give a, a hat tip, let alone a thank you to Rand for just being there and being uh, a shepherd of SEO for such a long time. What are some yeah. of the other factors that are clearly um, uh, incongruent with what Google has been saying over the time? Well, one of the things that they have said is they don't use Chrome at all in Google search, but right. there are a couple of metrics that mention Chrome explicitly, or not metrics, uh, features that mention Chrome explicitly. So as an example, there's something that's called Chrome in total. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, looking at that is just like a clear indication, like, hey, there is something coming from Chrome, right? Like yep. whether they they say it or not. And also there was a another document that I found that was separate from this leak, which is showing on the screen right now, which talks about the real-time boost signal. Mm -hmm. And in that, as I've highlighted, they say that Chrome visits is coming soon. So just having all this information that that says like, hey, Chrome is being used, um, you know, it, it just kind of clarifies that they weren't telling us the truth for all this time. Yeah, they flat out said they don't use anything from Chrome for ranking, but you've got and, and even Matt Cutts back in the day was qu previously quoted as saying, says, as you write in the article, that Google does not use Chrome data for any part of organic search. And recently, John Mueller reinforced the idea. So you got the coming soon factors. You see what this what this API document is. It's not only his historical reference to things that were said that are possibly incongruent with what you're seeing in the uh, API documentation, but you're also seeing things that they're working on right now. Right with that coming soon tag. This is there. There's there's a lot of documentation of that code in there. Not for everything, but for a number of factors. There's some interesting um, uh, code documentation points along the way there. Right. Yeah. So the the coming soon thing that that document was actually from like 2016. So oh, gotcha. I assume it's already been implemented. Roger that. But um, you know the thing is like again we don't know the time frame that this represents. We do know that um, you know that code was likely out there for two months mm -hmm. based on the change history in GitHub. But we don't know if that represents like the current state Got at it. that time. We just Got know it. that that code was published. But there's a lot of signals in there specifically as it relates to links like there's many many sections about what are called anchors in this context mm -hmm. and you know there's things that indicate that google looks at uh link velocity of spam there's things that indicate that they are storing content in the same way that w the wayback machine does right where there's like you know various uh iterations of it and that they look at the last 20 versions when they're considering links wow um you know they're they're considering your whole page page rank when they're looking at any page they have a home page trust score where they're saying like do we trust this home page um they're looking at font sizes they're looking at you know that for terms in your content also looking at it in your links uh one thing that i did not see was mm. any mention of disavow which is interesting you know disavow can be implemented in any number of ways right but there's no indication in what i have that that disavow is like being ported into this. Mm -hmm. So my assumption is that it's really just being used to train a classifier rather than like used directly on specific sites. But again, I could be wrong because there's just limited context that we have. Roger that. But whole point here is that we're just getting access to things that we never had before. And it's really allowing us to validate what we already have suspected. And I think the downstream impact of this is going to really inform things like, 
you know, uh, more intelligent rank factor studies and Mm -hmm. just people not paying attention to things that they did that really made no sense uh, just because, you know, whatever the best practice in SEO is saying. So, yeah, you speak about the downstream effect here. I mean, there are uh, socials all over the place. It's popping everything about this release, this news. And uh, there's a lot of kind of vindication and validation of SEOs that thought they were seeing certain behaviors that what they were told were not a, a, a ranking factor, but they they suitably were. Um, mm-hmm. I guess the question is, is there there's a bit of a... Um, conspiracy space where people are talking right now about, hey, this is kind of uh, timely, all things being equal, when uh, uh, there's such a pushback on AI overview. Could this old code, that, I mean, you don't know the dates on this thing, you don't know when this was actually active, could this be a distractionary measure as opposed to something that's, it could very well be real, but it could also be three years old and so many things have evolved since then. What do you think? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think that's the case because again, Google tried to get rid of this that, yeah. on the seventh of this month. So I don't think they were like, "Hey, let's push this out so <laughs> they it. can be distracted on AI overviews." Fantastic, fantastic. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, that's some of what's popping around right now is this timing, and they're not actually looking at the dates that are actually in play here. So, what do we do as SEOs? What do we do with what we see here? Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and be like, here's the prescription for everyone. Here's what you need to do. Yeah. My goal is really to like uh, bring, educate people like, hey, here's how things work. I'm kind of like the Ikea furniture of SEO. Right? <laughs> like, here, here's how it works. Here's the instructions. Here are the pieces. You put it together yourself, that sort of thing. <laughs> um, but for my clients, I mean, we're definitely going to dig into this and take a look at like what they've been doing. Yeah. Uh, reconsider some small components of the strategies, things like that. Um, but yeah, I think it really is an opportunity for everyone to like rethink what are the best practices in this space. It's amazing seeing how much, and, and we also appreciate the uh, the deep dive that you've given this uh, because we can look at, look at this with a bit of a roadmap knowledge based on your effort here. You've been digging in, into this for a good quality 12 hours, just putting this entire document together, let alone how you've been an a- analyzing this. So kudos for that. I guess the question is, is this going to um, reset some conversations with Google? Do you think this is going to be even acknowledged as a space or are they going to pretty much just ignore the entire thing ever happened? What do you think? Um, I, I think that Googlers don't like criticism. Right. And I think that, you know, they've always had this shield to be like, oh, you're wrong about this. Mm-hmm. And I think we've removed that shield. So I think it's going to be, at least for the short term, there's going to be some difficulty between our camps, so yep. to speak. Yeah. And I think they're definitely going to, you know, look to like shut me out of more things, which is fine with me because <laughs> I'm cool with that. Um, but yeah, I think it's definitely going to make some difficulty between Google and the SEO community, at least for the short term. Well, if they were smart, they'd actually bring you closer in because, I mean, for being kind of this, this, this hearkening person, I mean, you're bringing up a heck of a lot of information that there was uh, there was suspect for years and years and years, and it's finally out that these were factors that they were continually paying attention to. So if they, especially with the PR that they're getting with AI overviews, I think I think leaning in and connecting with and and really championing some of the SEO inf- influencers such as yourself as as well as Rand in this moment is probably a smarter play than closing the doors on you because we all know that you're pretty loud out there. And as soon as that cl- <laughs> that door gets closed, we're going to hear even more. So um, just- listen, if Google, if Google wants to give me a level nine individual contributor role to shut me up. Sure. I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there you go. All right. Well, um, we want to give everybody a, a chance to have a look at this. We'll put all the links in the show links. Um, thank you for spending your time here. Just letting us know what in the world's going on. Um, you were sitting on this for a little while, weren't you? Nah, he gave it to me on Friday. So Holy I've, crap! I've been digging into it all weekend, 
And, you know, we obviously had like holiday weekend things to do. And so I'm like engaged with my family, but also just turning this stuff over <laughs> in my head the whole time. So, um, yeah, I finished it last night and immediately published it. Damn. So, like I said, on, on, in, in, uh, on Twitter, uh, you know, while we were all grilling barbecue, you were grilling Google, <laughs> literally, as you were <laughs> cranking this thing out. So thank you for your dedication because, hey, to do that on a holiday, but when news happens, news happens, right? Yeah. Indeed. Fantastic. Well, uh, we'll get this out as quickly as we can. Any final words for the SEO audience that uh, didn't even know this was coming at them? How do we how do we how do we navigate this with some sort of cert certitude going forward? So the thing is, I don't think you should be doing much differently. I think you still should be, you know, frankly, making things that people react well to. So in other words, make great content that aligns with their expectations, promote it well, get them to click on it a lot, because clearly that's a factor. Hmm. And, um, you know, it really just comes down to like making things that people want. So stay focused on that. Absolutely. And you also say, hey, links still seem pretty important too, as opposed to uh, yeah. what they... But if you make things that people want, you're you'll get, get links. links. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, always great to be able to have you on the show. And we'll circle back around whenever the, the, the SEO world digests what you've rolled out there. And, uh, and we'll dig through it and maybe ask for a couple clarifications along the way. Yeah, thanks for having me. More always. than welcome. More than welcome. All right. Track Michael down on Twitter, X, at iPoolRank. And you can also find him everywhere, Michael. What are the other uh, social media accounts that you want to throw out there? Let's get that out there as well. Yeah, I'm on all the things. I'm on uh, Instagram, TikTok, you know, just I pull rank everywhere. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. With that, let's go ahead and wrap up this news slash. And again, thank you for the contribution in the news. We'll have that coming out here very soon. But want to get this news out as quickly as possible. So from all of us over at the edge, uh, today is not a day to be a piece of cyber driftwood. Never is, actually, but especially today. So check out Michael's uh, postings. That's a pretty deep dive into something that is amazing to see in one place. So uh, pretty big moment here today.